r slash ask reddit detectives of reddit what are some of the creepiest cases you have worked on my brother not me i usually tell this long and dramatic but here is the quick to the punch version schizophrenic woman reported being watched by ghosts at the abandoned funeral home it turned out when investigating someone or something dumb 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 was actually watching the people in her building and keeping crude logbooks of their coming and goings and left some of them in the place. My brother's theory was that they were discovered almost discovered and fled. Anyways no idea what kind of crime was being planned but that whole thing sounded creepy as duck to me. Yeah. Trying to find a way to bury someone alive? I guess since OP forgot the serious tag and literally no one has replied who is actually a detective yet. I used to work as an EMT. When I first started I went on a prison call once, our PT had a medical issue, and on the way to our patient me and my partner witnessed another inmate eviscerate himself somehow. He was beating on his his hospital cell door screaming for painkillers and how now you'll have to take me to the hospital and the nurses non pulsed were like you're we called someone but don't sweat it this is like the third time he's tried this. Also we were warned not to try and go in and help him cause he would most certainly attack us. Dude has his intestines hanging out and entire staff seemed to think it was no big deal. Kinda crazy. I soon learned how ducked up prison hospitals are eventually I too became desensitized. Edit. Fixed a typo. Alright. Detective now but this happened when I was on patrol several years ago. Got a call to check the welfare of a guy whose neighbor hadn't seen him in a couple years. Why it took so long to report. But it was out in a rural area. Anyway. We roll up and the windows are black with mold and flies. Car is parked in the garage. No signs of forced entry. Breach the door and find said guy wrapped up in a phone cord beside a toppled chair in his dining room. He was mummified melting into the carpet. Barely recognizable as a human aside from his shape and clothes. The smell of him mingled with the inches of stagnant water in his basements from burst pipes and all the dead flies and mold. I'll never forget it. We also found two bags of groceries neatly packed on the floor in his kitchen. House was very tidy as well. No witnesses. Estranged from his family. Clearly had a cat but we never found its remains. Medical record indicated he had a heart condition. My theory is he was having a heart attack and tried to call 911 but never got to make the call. Perhaps the creepiest part? His mailbox was overflowing with past due bills and cancelled utility notices. The last one was a couple months old, and it stood a I learned it to someone had long to call. This happened when I was a newer cop on patrol. Long before I became a detective, I was working midnight in a neighborhood with a high violent crime rate, and we got sent to a dispute at a bar. This wasn't just any bar. We always referred to it as the Star Wars Cantina because it was always a shit show. We stopped a rape in progress in the dirt alley behind the same bar not long after this. I was working with a female that night. We make our way through the bar systematically booting people out. And get to the bathrooms. I open the door to the men's room and it's empty. Single stall bathrooms. My female partner goes to open the women's bathroom door but it's locked. She knocks on the door and a female says, I'll be out in a minute. We advise her that the bar is closing. Bars close at 4am in NY. After a couple of minutes we begin to grow impatient. Female partner knocks on the door again and the female agrees to open the door. When she comes out, we ask her what took so long. She's not providing any substance in her answers. She's wearing tight yoga pants. And we notice that she has a large bulge in the back of her pants crotch. We believe she was either doing drugs in the bathroom and shoved the rest in her pants or that it was a weapon. When we question her about it, she's very evasive and won't answer us. Female partner begins to search her, as she pulls back the female's pants and shines her flashlight down to look. My partner says, duck. She sees a baby arm sticking out from the female's vagina and up through her ass cheeks. This chick had been drinking and smoking crack all day. She had a stillborn and continued to stay at the bar and drink smoke crack. When the ambulance arrived, they went back into the bathroom with the female and pulled the rest of the baby out of the female and into the toilet bowl. The baby was completely formed, except it never formed a head. It was just sunken in around the neck. I've seen some crazy shit in my career like brutal homicides etc. But that one always stands out the most. 
X insurance investigator here. The most unsettling arson case I worked was at the Masonic Temple in the historic Black Business District in downtown Birmingham Al. This beautiful 8 story renaissance revival style building was constructed in the 1920s and included a massive marble lobby and a grand, and I mean grand, ballroom. It also housed numerous black owned businesses like tailors, dressmakers, attorneys, doctors, dentists, the NAACP, ETC etc. After integration and white flight, the businesses closed or moved, resulting in the building becoming vacant, with the exception of the still functioning masons. Even though the building was heavily secured and guarded by a single security officer, it was still breached by squatters crackheads, who managed to cause a fire on the third floor. That's where I came in. My job was to determine the source, cause, and extent of the fire damage. That meant exploring the entire building, which had no electricity because the fire department cut it until it was deemed safe to resume electrical services. The grand ballroom took up the entire second floor, and luckily had no damage. So I just admired the exquisite millwork and decor. The third floor housed mostly professional offices. Some even contained their original mid-century furniture, in pristine condition. The fourth floor however, became darker, literally darker. I used a flashlight to advance down the gloomy hallways, and inspect every room. I found the NAACP office that was literally frozen in time, fire cabinets and all. As I was moving down the second hallway my eyes fixated on a large, looming structure in the far corner. I slowly made my way closer, nervous about what I would find. Finally I was close enough to discover, a ducking coffin, an old, Dracula style coffin, standing up at the end of the hall. I didn't dare touch it, as I ascended the building, alone. Each floor proved darker and gloomier than the one before, even though each floor had the same amount of windows. And the further up I moved, the more ducking coffins I found, in the middle of offices, in closets, blocking doors from the inside. It made no sense, until I got to the top floor, there, I found only two businesses, a coffin company, and the order of the Eastern Star. I had an overwhelming feeling that I absolutely should not be there, especially not snooping around the OES lodge. I snapped a few pics, then bolted down the hall and hit the stairwell to the lobby. The only area I hadn't inspected was the basement, and I wasn't sure my nerves were up to it. I discovered a full fallout shelter down there. Hundreds of drums of community shelter supplies, water, food, medical supplies, radiation detectors, everything. The whole building was a massive time capsule, and I felt like I went back in time just being there. That was definitely my most interesting and spooky investigation. Detective here, one of few on reddit it would appear, had a sexual assault job few years back. Woman went to a fancy dress party, attacked on her way home. Doing enquiries on the street we luck out. Find this neighbor with CCTV, captures the guy jumping her and dragging her into a front lawn. She was wearing a little red riding hood costume, so she was easy to spot. She'd been drinking, couldn't remember how she got home. Checking possible routes we find a rundown housing complex nearby and found more CCTV of her stumbling home alone. Hood up, headphones in, she's oblivious when he suddenly appears from the shadows behind her, watching her, hiding behind corners, then following her again. He keeps getting to within touching distance of her and then backing off. Perp has a black furry hooded coat up over his head, is completely covered head to toe, looks like a wolf. Whole thing very surreal. Anyway that wasn't the creepiest thing. We managed to trace her back to a well known fast food place a few blocks away. Turns out Wolfman was in there for over 2 hours before she walked in, loitering in the queues, bailing out at the last minute, standing in the corner watching girls come in. Guy was waiting for his perfect target, bet he didn't believe his luck. Some of the creepiest footage I've ever seen was of when she walks in. Restaurant had HD footage. I'm not shitting you. He was licking his lips. Didn't take his eyes off her once. Followed her out. The rest we already knew. I honestly think it's stupid that you should have to add a serious tag to your Ascredit post if you want it taken seriously. Ascredit posts should be serious by default. If you want a joke thread, you should have to add a satire tag. I ducking hate seeing a good question, only to realize the thread is nothing but the funny jokes. 
I'm not a detective but, I did read Encyclopedia Brown as a kid, semicolon people that shouldn't respond. Duck that kid, like an OG snarky nerd for imposter. I could never solve the puzzles when I was little and he was always like ha. Huh. Actually I, 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 I b3 adjusts glasses I knew that guy was a fraud because anyone who's an equestrian doesn't climb on a horse that way. Okay I, 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 I. here's a non joke but it's my husband's story. He is a detective. Someone dumped a body in an alley right by the PD. But in a spot that no one frequented. So after a few days in midsummer heat the body melted so bad they couldn't it by looks or tattoos. Just the clothes and hair. And DNA once they figured out who she was. Long story short it was a serial killer who had dumped her. And they found CCTV of him stalking people at the local shopping center right after he dumped the body. They watched him spend over 4 hours walking around. Leaving to his car and changing clothes hat and going back in. Following women for a bit. Changing his mind. He left empty handed. And ended up getting caught a couple states away the following week. Creepiest part for me was that I went shopping there the same day. Made me thankful for all the situational awareness training I got from my dad. Also a detective. Made my husband more paranoid. But that's a different story. Not a detective but I know a creepy case. A friend of mine grew up in a big family house with her immediate family plus an uncle and grandparents. Sometimes her and her brother would wake up with things written on their faces in permanent texture. Just random phrases nothing too shocking. The kids were about 8 or 9 years old. They both deny doing it and no one looked any further into it. Anyway eventually the uncle is killed in his bed. Stabbed to death. The police investigate and it turns out there's a dude living in their roof. Detective here. Attached to a coastal town with a fishing wharf. Started work one day when we get a call from the water police who have responded to an abandoned boat floating off the coast. They have towed it into the bay where they requested our assistance and they would advise us further on arrival. We head down thinking someone had stolen the boat or something else routine. When we get there we are told that no one went further than the entrance before it was sealed off as a crime scene. We have a quick look below the deck and see why. Three people. Clearly dead with one slumped over the wheel one on the floor and the other in a chair. No struggle. No injuries and nothing out of place. Completely silent other than the water on the hull and the fenders squeaking against the police launch. Turned out to be an accident. Lack of upkeep on the very old engine meant fumes leaked in and the three were poisoned. At which point the engine just ran until the diesel was gone. I have a couple that I was tangentially involved with. First one that comes to mind was this kid. Smart kid. Chinese student coming to America for school on an engineering scholarship I believe. Was dating a girl during undergrad. But they broke up so he could go to grad school at an Ivy League. She started talking to someone else a while after they broke up and he caught wind of it. He bought an airsoft gun and some knives online. Next day I shipped them to his apartment. Drove back to where his ex lived and staked out her house. Taking meticulous notes about the comings and goings. When his ex was home. When her roommate was home, he went and knocked on the door when just the roommate was home. Brandished the airsoft gun like it was a BB gun and negotiated his way in. He bound and gagged to roommate and waited for his ex to get back. When she finally got back, he forced her at gunpoint to sit in a chair, where he tied her up and taped over her mouth. He stabbed her in the neck once and then just stared at her, expecting that to kill her instantly, like a movie or video game. When it didn't. He stabbed her, I don't know how many more times, but a lot more. To me the creepy part is the level of planning that he did. I can understand the crime of passion, but this was so dispassionate. To have enough time to order your murder weapons online and have them delivered. Then drive hours to the destination of your murder and plan it out. And at no point get the feeling that you shouldn't follow through with this act. To me that's the sign of a true sociopath. Insurance adjuster here. I'm not a detective, but I do lots of fraud investigations. The ones that aren't fraudulent sometimes just turn out to be really ducking weird. The winner for me hands down is the man who claimed he was terrorized by mole people. I know, I know. Mole people sounds like something I would make up for fake internet points. We had a laugh about the adjuster potentially trying to pad their claims count because this man filed 60 claims in about 7 months. For context the average is like 1 a year for most policies. After talking with this gentleman, I no longer had doubts. 
My in-person interview was about 2 hours. I had more than enough in the first 5 minutes and was trying to leave for most of it. But he kept blocking the door or directing me to wrong way to keep the mole people off my scent. It was kind of sweet in a twisted way. He genuinely thought the mole people would come after me if I didn't follow his rules. He directed me to park ye old company car about a mile away on a concrete parking flat he had made. We couldn't walk on the dirt road there. The old people constantly changed where it went. The claims he filed were all in similar veins. The mole people moved his car every night with magnets and damaged the suspension and the noise kept our insured awake. They'd steal his hubcaps and put them back before they thought he would notice. But he noticed and they were covered in scratches from being pulled through the dirt. They would use long thin sticks from underground to siphon gas or wiper fluid or oil, but never more than a few drops, and for every one of these things he would file a claim which would inevitably be well below his deductible. We decided there was no fraud, but a call to adult protective services was merited. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.